This is David. And this is Jonathan. David and Jonathan were best friends. Their friendship was so famous and so strong, it's written down in the Bible. David and Jonathan had a lot in common. They were both young guys who liked doing stuff outdoors, like running around in nature, and target practice with slingshots, and bows and arrows, and listening to music. Well, at least David was into music. See, as a shepherd boy, David got famous for defeating the giant Goliath. As he grew, David won battle after battle for his nation Israel. David was even anointed, or specially chosen, by God to become Israel's next king. Oh, no way! This is about me. And people even made up a song about David that went something like this. Oh, I've heard this song. Yeah? The, the king's killed a thousand, but David's killed his tens of thousand. Whoa! Pretty epic, huh? You might think everything would just go super smoothly for David from there on out, but the story is a little more complicated. See, the guy who was currently ruling Israel, the king mentioned in that song, was King Saul, and he was kind of paranoid. King Saul knew God had picked David to be the next king, so every time David was around, Saul got nervous. Like, seriously nervous. And to keep an eye on David, King Saul brought him into the king's palace to play music on a lyre, which was a kind of harp. At least two times while David was playing music to help King Saul calm down, out of nowhere the king grabbed a spear and threw it at David. Both times Saul missed. And both times David ran for the hills. Literally, he ran to the hills to hide out in caves. Dark, stinky caves filled with scorpions and snakes and other nasty stuff. To make all this even more complicated, Jonathan, David's best friend, was King Saul's son. Yep, that's right. David's most powerful enemy was his best friend's dad. Like Spider-Man and the Green Goblin. Kind of. But the friendship between Jonathan and David never failed. In fact, it got stronger despite the challenges. As a symbol of their friendship, Jonathan gave David all his princely armor. Jonathan was basically telling David, I can't fight you, man. You're like a brother to me. I love you. That's in the Bible. Well, kind of. It says, Jonathan loved David as he loved himself. Basically, Jonathan was willing to do anything for David. That's how strong their friendship was. But David was still in hiding, so Jonathan had to sneak away to see him. David said, What have I done wrong? What is my crime? Why is your father trying to kill me? Jonathan knew David was innocent, and also that his father, the king, was kind of nuts. So they made a plan. The next day, the king was throwing a huge party. Jonathan said, Go and wait by that hill. I will go to that hill and shoot these arrows as if I am shooting at a target. Then I will tell my servant to go find the arrows. If everything is fine, I will say, you went too far. The arrows are closer to me. Come back and get them. If I say that, you can come out of hiding. But if there is trouble, I will say to the boy, the arrows are farther away. Go, get them. If I say that, you must leave. The Lord is sending you away. Remember this agreement between you and me. The Lord is our witness forever. Sure enough, the day came, and it wasn't safe for David to return. So Jonathan aimed, fired his arrow, and called out, The arrows are farther away! Hurry! Go! Get them! David knew what that meant. He came out of his hiding place just long enough to say goodbye to Jonathan once and for all. David promised Jonathan that no matter what happened, David would protect Jonathan's family for as long as he lived. Jonathan said, Go in peace. We have taken an oath in the Lord's name to be friends forever. Eventually, King Saul and Jonathan both died. Years later, when David was finally king of Israel, David remembered his promise to his friend Jonathan. David even adopted Jonathan's son, Mephibosheth, let him stay in his palace, and always made sure there was a seat for him at the king's table. Seriously. You can read all about this in the Bible in 1st and 2nd Samuel. Jonathan and David were friends, so they were loyal to one another and even risked their own lives for their friendship. And it wouldn't be the last time a friend was willing to lay down their own life to save someone they loved. A little while later, God would send someone to be the ultimate friend who would lay down all the power in heaven and on earth for the ones he loved. And I can't wait for you to hear that story. <laughs>